I have gathered everyone here today to make an important announcement. Perhaps some of you will have heard the news already. I am, in fact, planning to rebuild the Jade Chamber. Rebuild the Jade Chamber? That's a huge project! The building site has been chosen, and most of the materials have been assembled. Three key items are, however, still outstanding. They are as follows. Sunset Vermilionite, Wonder Cores, and Adepti Sigils. Adepti Sigils, bro? I take the saying, time is money, more seriously than most. Efficiency is everything. I will pay a generous price for the materials that you find. And in addition, the first three people who collect all the materials will have the opportunity to ask me a question. You may ask me anything, and I will give you an honest answer. I trust that this means of compensation will be to everyone's satisfaction. Ningguang's rebuilding the Jade Chamber? This is a huge deal! So you heard my announcement, did you? What do you think? Interested? No. Come on, yes. dude. Providing the question pertains to something I am knowledgeable about. She she doesn't know shit, dude. She doesn't know jack shit. Really? Ooh, the primer will ask you about how to run a business. <laughs> of course. But how much information I share with you will depend on your performance. Remember, this is a race against the clock. A rare opportunity presents itself to you. Do not let somebody else snatch it from your grasp. Ningguang seems super busy. Come on, we'd better get going. Ma'am, you seem like an eminent and distinguished young lady to me. I can see that you're easily gonna win this procurement contest Lady Ningguang has set up. As it happens, we have some information about the materials that I really think might interest you. Come on, let's find somewhere a little more private, and we can get down to brass tacks. No, I don't need it. Ah, uh, don't be like that. Hey, come on, don't go! <laughs> Why don't you stand there after her? Oh, right, yeah. Jeez, dude. Did you hear that? She know they said they had some useful information. Information's just what we need right now. Let's follow them and see what we can find. Oh, there they are. <laughs> well, will you look at that, ma'am? Nowhere left to run. Boss, I got a bad feeling about this. Look at her, the, the white hair, the, the energy she gives off. I, I'm telling you, there, there's something different about her. Yeah, dude, this guy, the brave guy, Ching Chiang the brave, he knows what he's talking about, man. So what? She's loaded. How are we ever going to repay those gambling debts if we just let money walk away from us, huh? Dumb. Dumb, 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 dumb. I've already told you. I don't need your information. If you still can't grasp that, I'm happy to repeat it in a way that won't be so easy to forget. <laughs> Master warned me not to lay a hand on anyone in Liyue Harbor. But here we are. Hmm. Perhaps... Uh, yes. Let's call it fate. Boss, I'm telling you, something's not right. The smart guy. Why isn't this guy the boss? What are you afraid of? We're just selling uh. information. It's not illegal. If she lays a finger on us, all the better. We'll sue her for everything she's worth. Oh, you again. The Millilith? What, what, what are the Millilith doing here? Did you do this? Hmm? You ought to mind your own business. I swear. Silence. How dare you threaten innocent civilians? You're coming with us. <laughs> no, no. Don't, 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 don't be angry, sir. P p p please, let me explain. <laughs> yeah, dude. Shen He. Shen He? My name. Oh, I've heard about you two before. 
Thank you for helping to defuse the situation. Uh, I could have dealt with it myself, though. I suspect smashing his head against the ground a handful of times is all it would have taken to get him to surrender. <laughs> you, you can't do that! That's way too violent! This is Leela Harbor! There are laws against that kind of stuff, you know! Laws? <laughs> yeah, laws. Psst. Do you think Shenha might be an adeptus? No, she's not. Are you here to buy some herbs? I do hope you brought your prescription. Chingsen, glaze lily, and violet grass, please. Half a pound of each. What kind of prescription is this? Sounds more like a lunch order. <laughs> oh, here you go. That's everything we have in stock. Thank you. She's really eating them! Sunset Vermilionite, Wonder Course, and Adepti Sigils. Let's start at the top of the list and work down. So, for Plastrite... I was wondering who I could hear arguing over there. So, it's you. Ah, the variety of Plastrite used in the Jade Chamber, yes? There is some mention of it in the Seven Mountain Treatises. When activated, Sunset Vermilionite rises up all the way into the clouds. As far as the records show, virtually all Sunset Vermilionite in existence has been mined and taken possession of. But the Feiyun Commerce Guild would know far more about this than I do. Okay then, let's go ask at the Feiyun Commerce Guild. Thanks, Baiju! Master Singcho, thank goodness you're finally back. Yeah, we just happened to find him there, hey, huh? Shincho? According to records of drifting clouds, Seagazer once built an abode to store his rarest and most exquisite treasures, among which was some sunset vermilionite. After Seagazer passed, the abode was abandoned, and its location was lost to time. Luckily, I came into possession of a stack of folk history books just recently. They make some oblique references to this lost abode, and after cross-referencing them against each other, I'm now fairly certain that it is situated in the Lisha area. Let's see. Shincho said it should be around here, but Paimon doesn't see anything. Uh. What? Hmm. This place was hidden using a special Adepti art. But now that I have removed it, we can inspect the area more closely. Wow, that's amazing! Yep, let's take another look around! Hey, look! Is that a new Sealy over there? Follow the Sealy. Uh. <laughs> the Sealy got to here and then disappeared. Should we go over and take a look? Yeah, this place is nice. Hmm. I believe this is the abode of that Adeptus. Alright. With any luck, the Sunset Vermilionite we're looking for. Really? My Pinard see! Huh? Isn't that the Sealy from before? Oh, that's how they look. They look interesting, man. Like with the one eye. And this thing looks more like a scarf now. You still look like the head to me. Closer look, the rocks and trees here don't seem complete. <gasps> These are not real clouds. They are the product of an adepti art used for spatial partitioning. A fog machine. If we want to go down, we must first destroy the mechanism that is maintaining the adepti art. All right. Let's destroy the fog. Oh, wait. I'm playing as this character. Huh. huh. This is actually my first time playing this character. The last time I saw her was uh, when uh, they were teasing like uh, the leaks quote unquote predictions. But instead, Yula came out. That was the time when I saw this character was for the first time. You know. Anyway, whatever. Let's go. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. 
Uh. Hmm. Interesting. So I can hold it twice. Nice. It appears that we've been taken for intruders. This time, why not allow me to take care of this? By ordinance divine. Woo! Nice. She's actually pretty nice to use, man. I thought he had other stuff in here as well. Is this it? Is this the Sunset Vermilionite? It's so huge! Don't worry. I can handle the weight quite easily. How is Shenmue able to carry that huge rock all by herself? Huh. Did I get super strength much? We can't slow huh. down yet. Let's go meet her at the building! Oh my god, I can't believe my eyes. This is top tier in size and quality, and the condition it's in is quite simply immaculate. Congratulations, this item is approved for submission. I'm going to award you full marks for the Sunset Vermilionite item. May I take your name? My name isn't important. I'm not even here to compete. I was just delivering this for some other people. They should be here any minute now. Shenhe! Ah, so you're the ones behind this. No wonder. The rarest talent turns in the rarest plastrite specimen. But I have to correct you on one point. It's not helper, it's secretary. <laughs> as a side note, Lady Ningguang has rented some dwellings in the nearby area to serve as accommodations for the contestants. If you need a place to rest... Now, please excuse me. As you can see, there is still a lot of work to do on the building site. By win. Yeah. Hi there! Checking in, are we? You're just in time. We only have two rooms left. Since this was chosen as the building site for the new Jade Chamber, we've had a constant stream of people in this area. And not just workers, either. Visitors, business people, tea sellers, all sorts. One of your rooms is still being cleaned. I, I guess it should be ready within the hour. The other room is just at the door on the left. Here are your keys. All right. Hope you enjoy your stay. Please excuse me. I'll leave you to it. Shenha, you should go get some rest. We'll hang around outside until the other room's ready. Mm-hmm. See you tomorrow. Yeah, sure. Hey, isn't that Cloud Retainer? What's she doing here? Let's go and say hi. One trusts you have met Shen He. So, are you getting along quite well? So far, so good. Yeah. So, you know Shen He too, Cloud Retainer? Naturally. Save for Ganyu, who spends the majority of her time in Liyue Harbor. All the Adepti living today are acquainted with Shen He to some degree. Cool. Adeptus name anyway. Calling her Shenhua feels kind of friendly, but also kind of disrespectful. So Paimon's thinking maybe it'd be better if we called her by her Adeptus name instead. She's not an Adeptus, Paimon. Her Adeptus name? Why, pray tell, would Shenhua have an Adeptus name? Uh, don't all Adepti have a special title they go by? On this latter point, you are correct. However, Shen He is human. Oh, oh, right. Wait, what? I thought what? so. You knew already? So is Paimon the only one who didn't know? Do you mean to say that she presents differently from ordinary human beings? She was like this all those years ago when one first met her. In this respect, she has not changed. One first found Shenhe by chance in a cave. One was passing by and sensed the presence of a god's remains. Being of an ever-vigilant disposition, one entered immediately to inspect the scene. Inside was Shenhe, then aged around six years old. In her hand, 
She held a dagger with which she was confronting a monster that was the god's remains incarnate. Ha. Huh. That sounds so dangerous. When one arrived, she had already been locked in confrontation with this monster for several days. Most mortal children are fragile, both physically and mentally, and are highly reliant on their parents for survival. But not so her. That she was able to endure such terrible danger was due not only to her strong willpower, but also to the bloodlust and homicidal instinct with which she was born. Uh. One dealt with the monster, yet she still refused to lower her guard. She even pointed her dagger in one's direction and remained ready to strike. Only after she was satisfied that one had no intention to cause her harm did she finally relent. She then passed out without uttering a single word. In other words, if you hadn't passed by that day, Shenhua might have... Not necessarily. Upon one's arrival, one could sense that the god's wrath was gradually receding. Even had the stalemate continued, one suspects that Shen He may have still emerged the victor of the confrontation. That's still so dangerous, though! Why was a tiny little kid battling against the wrath of a god in the first place? Shen He is the GOAT! Holy! Six-year-old fighting against the god, bro? Huh. Alas, the mortal world is rife with suffering of every kind. And she had experienced her fair share of this, even at a tender age. Seeing that she was homeless, one decided to adopt her. Indeed, it is one to whom she refers. Xian He has an extraordinary constitution, making her well adapted to practicing the Adepti arts. All the Adepti cherished her talents, and so we were willing to train her. However, her homicidal urges did not subside with age. Rather, they grew stronger day by day. Moon Carver Oof. once performed a divination for her. He declared that her fate is to bear the curse of calamity. Consumed by malevolent energy, she is prone to bring harm to those around her. Such is the magnitude of the danger this poses. That her soul must be bound with red ropes to keep her homicidal instinct at bay. Oof. Red ropes have indeed served to keep her calmer and more content. They also seem to have rendered her somewhat inexpressive. Perhaps the red ropes are so powerful that they have suppressed some of her other emotions as well. It is only by fate that people's paths may cross. Now that Shen He's path has crossed with yours, please be sure to treasure the gift that fate has given you, and take good care of her. Oh, now Paimon gets it. You came out here to check up on Shen He because you were worried about her, didn't you? Don't need to say the obvious, Paimon. Ning Guang once made a bold assertion that this is to be the era of the contract between Liu Wei and the humans. Well, one is most curious to observe how she will respond to the coming storm. If she handles it admirably, one is willing to be a witness to her achievements. But if she does not, the Adepti shall not hesitate to seize control. Let us conclude our conversation here for today. One has occupied enough of your time, and night is approaching. Yeah, sure. So, Shen He isn't an Adeptus after all! She just grew up around the Adepti! Oh, no wonder she doesn't like being treated as an Adeptus! Having everyone falling over themselves to show their respect all the time must be kinda hard to deal with! <laughs> Sorry, Shenhua. Paimon had you down as an adeptus this whole time, but it turns out Paimon was wrong. It's okay. I don't mind. The fault is mine for not explaining everything to you sooner. Because in my experience, trying to explain is a futile pursuit. 
Still, though you mistook me for an adeptus, you never treated me as distant and unapproachable. Instead, you treated me as you would a friend. For this, I am very grateful indeed. To be fair, we've met our fair share of real adepti, too. Anyway, now it's settled. From now on, you're our friend. Whether you're an adeptus or a human isn't the important thing. First and foremost, we're just plain old friends. Got it. Although I don't know quite what it entails in terms of what I have to do, I must say <laughs> I like the title, friend, very much indeed. But before we do that, let's go to the building site and ask Ning Wong's little helper how the progress is going. Secretary. After all, Sunset Vermilionite is so rare. Paimon doubts many competitors will really be able to find any. If it turns out some of them have given up already, we'll be able to take things a little Oh, and another thing. We bought some grilled chicken drumsticks on the way back last night. There was a place just outside. I don't remember this. Here's one for you, Shenhua. Try it! So good. <laughs> I concur. It has a rich flavor. Far more agreeable than those I've cooked for myself in the wilderness in the past. That's because it's not finished. Hey, Violet! And hey, Beto! And hey! Um, person Paimon doesn't know? Yeah, person I don't know. Given the enormous scale of the Jade Chamber, we split the construction work into two phases to make sure the structure remains balanced. Before we find some suitable plostrite, we build the Jade Chamber's keel at ground level. Once the plostrite is ready, we place it into the keel and let the partially constructed jade chamber rise up to the height of the surrounding mountain peaks. The remainder of the construction work is then carried out at that altitude. Once everything is ready, we release the iron tethers and allow the jade chamber to rise to its target altitude. Miss Bywin, we brought some new materials to submit. One moment. I'll be right there. The construction work has only been able to progress this rapidly thanks to the plostrite provided by you. Lady Ning Wong is most grateful and looks forward to seeing more of your work. Wow, can't believe you sourced the plostrite so quickly. It's the key piece of the puzzle. Looks like you beat us to the punch. Beto, you're joining the Jade Chamber contest too? <laughs> sure am. I happened to get my hands on a chunk of Sunset Vermilionite on a voyage a while back, so I figured I'd bring it over. Huh. So even though it's rare, we're not the only ones who managed to get a hold of it. Oh, I've got some introductions to do. This is the renowned Miss Yun, or Yun Jin, probably the most famous figure in the Liyue opera scene. Greetings. I'm sure we've met. Shenhe. I am their... friend. <laughs> Good to meet you. A friend of a friend is my friend too. Or, as I like to say, a mate of a crewmate is part of the crew. Miss Yoon is also here for the contest. Turns out she needed to borrow a boat, so we came together. It's an honor to finally meet you both. I've heard much about you. Miss Shenhe, though we are only meeting for the first time, I have a feeling that we will get along very well and to be honest with you all. I am in great need of this opportunity to ask Lady Ningguang a question. That's why I joined the contest. Thanks to my father's connections, I was able to acquire a specimen of the plostrite required. Fortunately, it was approved for submission, despite being a little on the diminutive side. Wow. So it looks like the three of us are competitors now. In that case... I have a proposal to make. Oh no, did no. Lady Ningguang said that the first three contestants to procure all three materials will be awarded the chance to ask a question. Well, there are three teams here. We can split the prize between us. No. Instead of competing against each other, we could work together to secure the top three places between us. What do you think? Sounds great, but how does it change things exactly? <laughs> <laughs> I think I see where you're going with this, Miss Yoon. You want to... <laughs> the plostrite was the most difficult item to source by a long shot. Luckily, all three of us managed to get our hands on it. The two remaining items aren't quite so rare, so as long as one of us finds a way to source it, 
The other two can hop on the bandwagon. How'd I do? Is that what you had in mind? <laughs> to be fair, that's actually a good plan. The problem is, I have a feeling I'm going to be carrying these freaking freeloaders. These filthy... Precisely. Huh. Interesting. Okay then. Alright. I'll go first. I have some leads on these wonder cores. From what I've heard, the core itself is really not that difficult to make. The hard part is getting hold of the ore used as raw materials. I'm gonna head back to the ship and ask Su Ling if he's heard of them. You guys... We will head into town and seek advice from Master Zhang of Hanfeng's Ironmongers. Thoughts? By the way, what question are you gonna ask Ningguang? I'm looking for a venue to host the performance of our new opera. Lady Ningguang has excellent judgment, so I would like to hear her opinion. Ooh, what's the opera called? Paima wants to go see it! I actually don't care. The opera is a labor of love by my father. He wrote it based on a popular urban legend about an evil spirit and an adeptus. I will see it to be respectful, but I still don't care. It's called The Divine Damsel of Devastation. It has a nice title, but I still don't care. Well... I guess I'll have to finish whatever quest up, cause... <sighs>